Clint in Creve Coire, Missouri. Uh, it, it's French, no doubt, and I'm sure I just butchered it. And I, <laughs> I, 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 I won't even go there. I was going to talk about my Glau Gloucester, and uh, you know, it's, it's I think it's Gloucester. I don't know, but I got a ton of emails on that, so thanks. And you can tell I still don't know how to pronounce it. Anyway, Clint writes to me, and uh, you know, what, what is this? You know, the old man teaching old man tricks. Uh, please discuss use of absorption versus diffusion, particularly on the front wall, which is that wall back there. Uh, can I use both diffusion and absorption on the front wall? Most acoustic advice I read recommends diffusion on the rear wall. I see you have three large diffusion panels on the front wall with the FR30 and no absorption. Thank you. Um, yeah, well, you know what they say about opinions, right? Well, I can't say it on YouTube, <laughs> but everyone's got one. And uh, here's mine. I prefer diffusion over absorption, and our listening rooms are typically a combination of both. But apparently, it's the opposite of what a lot of people do. So on the front wall, and we call it the front wall because it's the wall in front of us as we sit listening, right? So you, and, and, and as Clint has noticed, I've got diffusion back here. And on the side walls, I've got absorption. And on the rear wall, which you're not actually seeing, I've got absorption. So my favorite setup is to absorb in the rear. So I got a dead end on the rear, not totally dead, but dead in the rear, live in the front. So that works really well for the kind of sound that we like, which is this big open depth filled sound stage to where the sound comes from the sides to, you know, beyond the speakers. You notice we're not towing them in a whole lot on the FR30s. And everything disappears. There, if you close your eyes, you can't point to where the speakers are. That kind of sound is more easily attained when you diffuse the front wall and you absorb the rear wall. Think of how it would be if you did the opposite. If you absorb on the front wall, it's going to isolate the speakers because the reflections that are coming at us, stereo reflections, aren't going to be uh, they're going to be absorbed at some frequencies. And, and that's part of the problem with absorbing is that it's very frequency specific. Like, for example, so as, as I talk real close here, you can hear, or if I go over to these sidewalls, see, as I'm talking, look what's happening to my voice. See how it's taking away all of the, the high frequencies. And then as I move away, the high frequencies come back, and then, boy, this makes me cross-eyed when I go in here. But you can hear in my voice what's happening, right? That's absorbing, absorption. And then as I walk over here and I come towards a diffuser, notice how my voice now sounds live. It continues to be live, and it, even if I get really close, it gets a little boxy because I'm talking into a box. But you can, you can hear the difference between that and what we did over there, which was... Uh, absorption. So live end like that or dead end here. And that is really helpful on the back wall as opposed to the front wall. And that's just something I have done for the last 40, 50 years. And it works really well. Am I an acoustician? No. <laughs> I know how to design electronic circuits and I know how to set up stereo systems that sound amazing. So there's my credentials. <laughs> all right. Thanks, Clint. Uh, good luck with all that, and let us know how it all works out. Talk to you tomorrow. Bye.